29 Ways to Recycle Minecraft's Useless Things After so many years, Minecraft has plenty of mobs, blocks, and items to choose from. But with that, not everyone's going to be a winner. So today, in the spirit of Team C's, we're looking at ways to turn these so-called garbage features into something to value. Number 1. Snowballs aren't that impressive of a weapon. And in recent years, they've gotten even worse since they no longer hit players. But what they lack for us, they make up for on blazes. And if you put a stack of these in your offhand with a looting 3 sword, they become the cheapest way to use that enchantment, which I think is worthwhile. Number 2. On the long list of Minecraft transportation, saddle pigs don't stand out. But while they're a bit underwhelming to use this way, they're surprisingly useful in a minecart. Just tucking a pig into one of these can make them move just as fast as a powered rail. So if you're looking to save up on your golden redstone for something else, this could be a solid alternative. Number 3. Now, lecterns are not something you need to craft in bulk, but if you happen to misclick in a crafting grid, don't sweat it. Here's the solution. Since these share the same bottom texture as the oak planks, we can make something of a rotated pattern in your roof, which I'll admit is a lot better than leaving these lying in a chest. Number 4. Bats are notorious for not doing much, and while they can help to find caves, there's not much use for these on the surface. That is, until we add in an invisibility potion. As others have pointed out, these little flying rats can become something to ghost when they're invisible, letting us get both the flying particle effects and the spooky sounds for your haunted house build. Number 5. I'll take a wild guess that furnace minecarts aren't used that much in your world, or anyone's world for that matter. And while they can make minecart trains, those don't go too far without breaking. So instead, Instead, I'd suggest doing what this user does and using them for an additional texturing in the stone floor. It's a far cry from the intended use, but at least it's something. Number 6. Leather helmets don't serve much of a purpose in a Minecraft run, because in the time it takes to get the leather necessary, most of us are already finding iron in the caves. But what they lack in survival, they make up for in creative. Here we can use command blocks to make our own leather helmet animations, which turns this piece of junk into a work of art. Number 7. Every now and then, Minecraft adds a feature that doesn't make much sense, like the water Water breathing arrows, for instance. I mean, I don't know how often your friend is drowning, and then the solution is to deal more damage to help them out. But even if they aren't practical, at least on bedrock, we can chuck a couple of these on a slime block pusher and make ourselves a pretty fountain. Number 8. Polar bears are often criticized for being something of a pointless addition, and to that point, they are more of a hazard than a help. But to solve that, it's worth knowing that these things can go after foxes. And with that, we can partner the two together and use an angry polar bear to keep the foxes out of our chicken coop. Number 9. Most of us would see a dead bush and think nothing of it. And while they can give sticks every now and then, I think this gives more of a reason to collect these. See, by itself, these don't offer much for looks. But throw it in a pot with some leaves or moss above, and now we've got a custom plant perfect for your desk. Number 10. Coral is a tough block to use for decoration, because without special circumstances, it's going to dry out in most settings. So we normally just use the dead variants for the TNT duplication. But thankfully, waterlogged slabs let us get some use out of these. And if you tuck some on top like so, we can make a pretty convincing fuzzy carpet for your next living room. Number 11. Frostwalker isn't the most necessary of Minecraft enchantments. So if you've already got a pair, then the answer might be to give it to a villager instead. No joke, by using a dispenser, you can give it to a villager and then tuck them in a pack of mobs to easily move the horde across the ocean, which winds up being a lot easier than doing 19 trips in a boat. Number 12. Sea pickles seem like something of an odd addition to Minecraft, but thankfully we can find some better use for them than just some line dye. As it turns out, these make quite the tool when you use them in a hopper system. And with a couple like so, we can use their hitbox to redirect two streams without bottlenecking, which is not too shabby for a pickle. Number 13. If you're harvesting a bunch of trees, it's easy to build up something of an abundance of saplings. And at some point, it's more than we could feasibly replant. But before you start burning them, consider this. Since saplings age off of a random based system, we could build something like this to use our saplings as a random redstone generator. And it's the closest we've got to the copper golem. Number 14. Minecraft bells don't do much. And while you could use it for raids or ring that bell to get notified about all future uploads, thank you, by the way, that's about it. But luckily, it has a better use for your boats. See, when a dispenser places a boat against a bell, it is perfectly aligned for your ice boat highway. And now you don't have to worry about slipping off course. Number 15. If you're familiar with the set block command, you've probably come across some neglected blocks. And usually we don't have a reason to spawn one of these odd jobs in. But today, let's put one of them to use in the form of carpet slabs. And sure enough, by using the lower half of a bed block by itself, we can make a convincing colorful half block slab. Number 16. Hiding a door behind a painting has to be the oldest trick in the book. And at this point, these aren't fully anyone except for the newest of players. So to take this worthless secret entrance and bump it up, all we need are some hitboxes. And if you lay out a trap door here or a slab there, these become a lot harder to find, keeping your stuff safe for another day. Number 17. Horses sound cooler in theory than they happen to be in execution. And truthfully, the process of getting a decent horse makes it generally worse than an elytra. It takes more time for less reward. But in Bedrock, these might just have their purpose. See, on a horse, it's possible to speed bridge the same, meaning we can quickly place blocks in front of us 
without even having to break our stride. Number 18. While dead coral fans can be used for TNT duplication systems, dead coral blocks are a different story, and usually these are less desirable than their living counterparts. But while they might look less vibrant, their texture does still lend well to certain color palettes. And from there, we can make these pretty useful when mixed into a gravel path like so. Number 19. With the 1.17 update, we finally got a new tree into the game. But unfortunately for us, these new azalea ones didn't come with any unique wood type. And as such, they aren't exactly a building favorite, but their leaves might be their saving grace, since these retain their green color even when placed in the desert. And that, folks, is a welcome addition for your oasis. Number 20. All right, now I fully understand that the dragon egg has its place as a trophy for beating the game, but unless you're playing a game of tag, it just sits around. So to fix that and find a use for it, why not follow after this Reddit user and put it in an item frame for a nose? Which is silly, but at least it's something unique. Number 21. When you're in the nether, we all know that water's a lost cause. And while you can put it in a cauldron, that whole process takes time, which we don't normally have when we're on fire. But luckily, if you accidentally made some splash bottles of water, those could do the trick. Just throw one on yourself for a buddy, and boom, the problem solved. Number 22. Now, when you see a bin full of nearly broken golden swords, it doesn't exactly look like a treasure chest. And usually, we dump these gold farm rejects into something of a trash chute. But instead, why not take this overflow and then funnel it into a super smelter? Do that, and your gold farm will get an extra bonus on profits, which is always good in my book. Number 23. Now, clearly, mushrooms can have a use in the different stews we make, but the mushroom blocks? That's harder to justify. Though, if you have silk touch, you might want to consider this the next time you're in a dark forest. See, these blocks can be used as something of a fuel source, so if you're just going to throw them away, might as well let it work for you. Number 24. Most of the time you see lily pads, they're just good for clogging up our swamps. I mean, if you ask me, that's a missed opportunity. So, since we got a lot of them, why not put them to use? And I think this is the perfect solution. Since lanterns can go underwater, why not tuck these under your lily pads and make a cool looking solution to stop your drown from spawning. Number 25. Nobody likes waiting, especially with nether portals. After all, you not only have to wait for the sickness animation, but then you also gotta let the other side generate as well. And it's a pain for sure. But luckily, you can take any old garbage item, toss it through, and then let that do the loading for you, saving you time and giving that dirt block a purpose. Number 26. Chainmail is a cool concept, but it doesn't serve much of a gameplay function. And it's definitely not worth using over that iron set that you're already wearing. But if you have a helmet from a zombie's rare drop, let's use it before you lose it. And if you put one of these on an armor stand like so, it makes a nifty RGB keyboard for your next house's desk. Number 27. Today we're going to talk about Pillager Reformation, but we're not pulling that off with its crossbow. So after getting a Pillager in a boat, we can sit in it to wear it on that weapon. And then we take that disarmed Diva and put it next to your villagers. That way, any raids that might happen will start and stop with this one Pillager, never letting another wave happen to come by and destroy the populace. Number 28. Glow Lichen is a neat addition to the Caves and Cliffs update, but most of its purpose is served for lighting up those caves, and ultimately it doesn't do much up here on the surface. But this fixes that. As you'll notice, when you put this on coarse dirt, it gives a valuable transitionary block between dirt and stone, giving us builders another tool for our arsenal. Number 29. In most cases, dried kelp seems like a pretty useless food source. But while they might seem like garbage, they're actually pretty effective as trash. Let me explain. By crafting a chunk of these into some dried kelp blocks, we get the perfect texture for industrial trash bags, letting us add some new life into your city's alleyway. Number 30. Now, folks, the real garbage features that we need to talk about are the ones that are currently in our oceans. And to fix that, you can go to teamseas.org, and for every dollar that you donate, one pound of trash gets taken out of the ocean, which I'll admit is a pretty sweet deal. So after you donate there, make sure to take care and have a good one. All right. <laughs>